Hey everyone, so today we are going to talk about conditional distribution and statistical independence. So after reading this, many of you might have thought that, oh, is this related to conditional probability? Well, your thinking is absolutely correct. It is related with conditional probability. But then the question is how it is related to conditional probability. Okay, so instead of giving me the definition directly to you, let us try to arrive at the definition of conditional distribution with the help of conditional probability definition. Okay, but for that, I need to recall something. So you must have seen in my earlier lecture, but just for the sake of completion, let me recall the same thing here as well. Okay, so conditional distribution, distribution comes means random variable should come into picture. So what is a random variable? It's a function from a sample space to real numbers, right? So for every outcome, you associate a number. For every outcome, you associate a number. Okay, that was first thing to recall. Second thing, what is if A and B are two events, what is probability of B given A? By definition, it is probability of A intersection B upon probability of A. So conditional probability deals with the probability of events. Now random finding the probability that the random variable is taking some value is same as to find the probability of some event. That's what we have seen earlier. Why that is so? Because now see. If you have to suppose if this is my x1, okay. Question is we we dealt with this kind of question. What is the probability that the random variable is taking the value x1? But now if I call my a set to be set of all those outcomes whose image under x is x1, okay. So you collect all those outcomes whose image is x1. Now, since this is a subset of a sample space, therefore, this is an event. Okay. So now this A is a nice event. A is what event? Those outcomes which is taking the value x1. Let me call B to be those event. Now, suppose Y is another variable, random variable. So all those outcomes whose image is say Y1 under the random variable Y. So these are my two events of the same sample space S. Now, as soon as you have events, one can talk about conditional probability, correct? So now let us try to answer this with the help of these events. Okay, which, which events? This A and B. Now probability of B given A, that means what? Probability, what is my B? B is nothing but the random variable Y is taking the value Y1, given that random variable X will take the value X1. So here I have written this in the language of random variable because my b is nothing but all those outcomes where random variable is taking that outcome to y1 and similarly my event a what is this probability of a intersection b that means probability a is this b is this that means x is taking the value x1 and y is taking the value y1 divided by probability of a that means probability x is taking the value x1 so we had the definition of conditional probability. Then with the help of a random variable, we rewrote this definition in this way. Okay. Now, if my f of x, y is a joint probability distribution. Okay. If my small f of x, y is a joint probability distribution, whether it is a discrete or a continuous random variable, doesn't matter. Okay. So either it is a joint PMF or joint PDF. So what is this? probability that it is taking x and y x1 and y1 so this is what f of x1 comma y1 by our notation from our earlier lecture and what is this x is taking the value x1 is there any condition on y no there is no condition on y so when you are fixing your x and you are varying your y then that is nothing but the marginal distribution okay so here let me denote the marginal distribution by g function g of x1 so you fix your x1 and you vary your y. So this is a marginal distribution. We have seen the formula in our earlier lecture. Okay, so this is thing and let me denote this by y1 dash x1. So this is nothing but the definition of a conditional distribution. What is the probability that the random variable will take the value y1 given that x is taking the value x1. Then this is the formula and this is the formula you directly see in the book. 
but this is how you can arrive at that formula so no need to remember is the same thing okay so let let me call this as x and y so this is what the formula you have seen and if someone ask you what is conditional distribution for x given y it is the same thing f of x comma y upon now here it will be say h of y what is h of y it is the marginal distribution for the value y so you fix your y you vary your x and again here this should not be zero that means your g of x greater than zero and your h of y should be greater than zero we know that they are greater equal zero but since we are dividing so it should be not zero so this is the definition of conditional distribution okay so i hope this is part is clear now let's go for independence because after conditional probability you saw when the events are said to be independent events now here now we are in the world of statistics because the random variables are there so therefore statistical independence okay so the fund i say there what we had probability of b given a so when this probability is same as probability of b that means occurrence of the event a is not affecting the probability of b then we see that a and b are independent events good so here also we say the same thing when this is equal to f of y that means occurrence of x taking this is not affecting the occurrence of this y okay that means the random variable taking the value y so when such a thing happens or since for y i am representing h so let me call h of y okay so when this if this is equal to the marginal distribution of y okay so that's the difference there you have events a and b now here when you are only concentrating on one variable from the joint one we call it as a marginal okay so when it is not depending on x that means this is equal to the distribution of y that means my marginal distribution then we say this two are statistically independent okay and in such a scenario if i bring this over here what do i have i have h of y i bring here g of x and this is equal to f of x comma y so when your f of x y the joint pmf joint probability distribution whether it is discrete or continuous when your joint probability distribution is equal to the product of the respect to marginal distributions for all x y for all then we say that they are statistically independent if they are not same even for one x and y then they are not statistically independent okay so these are the definitions now let us see some example for more clear understanding so here is the first example a joint pmf is given to you x and y these are the range set for x range set for y and this is the joint pmf question is now if you want now if you want for practice sake you can find the marginal distribution for x for y and you can play with those thing find a joint cdf for couple of values for your own practice let me concentrate on conditional distribution okay what is the probability that y will take the value 3 given that x is equal to 2 so by definition what is this f of 3 comma 2 upon so g was the function right so g of 2 what is f of 3 comma 2 f of 3 so y so my y or you can also write this as f of 2 comma 3 upon g of 2 whichever way you like okay so my x was 3 and my y is 2 so usually we write the x component first that's usually the habit so but here now okay doesn't matter here they have mentioned x and y clearly so when my y is 3 and x is 2 what is the probability 0.10 0.10 divided by g of 2 what is g of 2 so my x is fixed my y is varying so x is fixed y is varying so i should sum it up so 0.35 0.35 so this is nothing but 10 by 35 which is nothing but 2 by 7 so this is the answer for the first question okay now let's go for the second one now in the second case what is the scenario here x will take from 1 to 3 and y is taking the value 2 so x is not taking 1 okay so this is f of 2 comma 2 plus f of 3 comma 2 because x will take the value 2 and 3 divided by h of 2 now this is x okay so x2 and y2 x2 
oh, y is not taking 3 so i should change my notation let me call this as 5 okay so this is 2 comma 5 and 3 comma 5 so what is f of 2 for you so x is 2 y is 5 so 0 0.2 plus x is 3 y is 5 so 0 0.1 so this becomes 0 0.3 upon h of 2 so my sorry h of 5 so this is fixed what is varying my x is varying so divided by 0 0.3 which comes out to be 1 so this is how you solve okay now let us take an example on continuous random variable so here is the next example so joint pdf is given to you so x is going from 0 to 2 y is going from 0 to 4 and otherwise it is 0 I have to find this value probability that y takes from 1 to 3 whereas x is 1 so what is the formula so your f so now in this case we have to play with the integration because it's a continuous so divided by g of 1 what is g of 1 that means I am, my y will be varying so my y will be varying y will go from 2 to 4 what is the function 6 minus my x is 1 minus y my y is varying so this is the marginal distribution for x equal to 1 what about this that x is 1 and y is going from 1 to 3 so x is 1 and y is going from 1 to 3 dy so this is what you have now i think it is easy to solve so integration 1 2 3 and uh, but y takes the value from 2 to 4 okay so you can simply write this as 2 to 3 this is 5 minus y dy upon integration 2 to 4 phi minus y dy okay so obviously this will be bigger because this is 2 to 3 and this is 2 to 4 so whatever answer you get that's the answer so that is how you are going to solve a problem when you have a pdf thing now here one can also verify whether they are statistically independent or not okay but for that one has to do little bit of work so i want to find for first g of x that means what my y is varying y is from 2 to 4 and 6 minus x minus y dy my x is fixed okay so this will be what 6 minus x into integration of 1 is y so this minus 1 by 2 y square so 16 minus 4 so what is this 12 minus 2x and this is 12 minus 6 so this is 6 minus 2x okay so 6 minus 2x is my g of x now let us try to find our h of y so what is our h of y h of y means my x is varying and my y is fixed 6 minus y minus x dx so 6 minus y into 2 minus x square by 2 so this is what i have so 6 2 are 12 minus 2y minus 2 so this is 10 minus 2y provided my calculations are correct so 6 minus 2x and 10 minus 2y okay so this is what i have now when i take the product will i get my f of x y let's try to see what is the product 60 minus 12y minus 20x plus 4xy so as you can see these two things are not equal therefore the random variables are not statistically independent okay so that's how one solves the problem involving conditional distribution and statistical independence so here is a homework problem for you so now this is in three variables okay so you have to find this quantity so in the numerator your x will go from 0 to half so your y is 1 by 4 z is 2 so put that value of y and z over here and integrate your x from 0 to half dx that's the numerator denominator is this so y and z is fixed and you vary your x from 0 to 1 and whatever answer you get that's the answer for the first question statistical independence you find the marginal distribution for x marginal distribution for y and marginal distribution for z take their product and see whether this is equal to this or not if they are equal then they're independent so if you have time i mean if you get time then do solve these problems and post the answer in the comment section thank you